All right, we're happy with our measurement. We measured over there and we measured here and we think that we're somewhere about a half a thousandth clearance on there and that's fine. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna smooth this bottom surface. This is just relief, it never touches this. This is actually measured out about quarter inch depth and the actual part only sticks out about, oh, 200 thousandths. Now we're going to measure the angle that this uh, cut was in here. This angle right here, we'll measure that with the uh, protractor. Now I took and took my Sterrett protractor and and measured on the face here, and I just took a glance at it, and I, it's right it's right at 45. So I am, and I know that that is just clearance, and it's not really riding on anything. So um, we're just going to go ahead and swing our compound around to 45 degrees in which we have and then we swung our, our compound or our tool block on our compound so that the uh, alignment or approach to that angle is kind of uh, almost about the same geometry or, or direction that, that it would come off of the boring bar as when we were working a straight bore. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to whittle this down and it looks like we got we got a measurement of oh about 850 um, we also have a measurement of about 375 out from there and we also have a dimension of about 600 thousands that way so we can average out between those three measurements right there to get what our flat is going to be that that the total amount of material removed so that's that's how we're going to do it. We're going to continue on that. All right, we finished our skim cut here. We've got uh, 375 there. We've got about 850 there. maybe five thousand out of six hundred pretty damn close and then we set this up and we kiss that angle right there and I don't think we have anything else to do to this and it's ready to come out of there ready to go you know here's the here's the sad news we pull the bearings out and then we're getting underneath here and and I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to get you a picture in on the other side with a flashlight but I can feel in here and behind each and one of these studs is a casted boss just for a thread uh, position so the only way to really repair these threads you know at first we talked about coming in here and drilling four new holes well this thing is really um, lighter duty than you picture it as a hub here and and really what is something got loose here and it was more so because there was more concern about the paint job and how things looked and the mechanical uh, aspect of this thing and anyway I'm gonna flip this around I'm gonna get you a picture in there um, I've given them the only way to really get in here is to go ahead and mill out a pocket in here backfill it and then refinish that surface right there so we'd be wasting out the paint job on these things at minimum and um, this would be about a full day's job to go in here and Re, you know, remove the material, clean it up, wall it up, and this face ain't the best. This this face has been galled as well, and this register is wasted around here. So, 
we'd have to fill those in and then machine you know you'd have to reconstruct almost this whole end here all right and uh, so we're basically going to be putting this back in a bag and he's going to take it back as this and we're not going to do anything with this rim here and we're going to continue uh, uh getting everything assembled and, and onto the other rim all right let's take a look at the inside here now all right you can see down in there in fact actually you can see the uh the one with the stud on it let me see if i can angle up here okay there's one there so the, they're just raised bosses inside this casting so actually and actually this this camera actually gives you a good picture of, of what the inside of this casting actually looks like all right all right i'm gonna get this one bagged up and we're gonna get this one over here because we're gonna start prepping out the mill there so we can get in and create the whole pattern in that adapter plans there all right, we're getting ready to set up the dividing head or super spacer, it more commonly known as a super spacer. And normally, when we go to set this up, we would set it up with a masking plate. And a masking plate, I'm going to show you how where these go and and how they're used uh, to configure for one hole pattern, either quantities of six four whatever your whole pattern is the only thing that super spacer won't do is the combinations of five okay uh that's the only downfall on a super spacer is uh, increments of five or ten um <clears throat> so anyway let's go ahead and the masking plate accessibility right here we're, we're on zero here so um, but it doesn't really matter where it's at unless you're going to set a plate in here but basically we're going to open this up and we're going to take the plate out but I will show you what the masking plates do for you. And we have combinations of 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, I think. 8 or 12 is, maybe it is 12, is my uh, largest masking quantities. All right. Now this plate here that's in here is a six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, now there's, um, I think there's 20, 24. I'll just verify that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 24 individual um, locks, okay? Meaning you can flip this handle. I mean, you can hold this handle out and you can put it on any degree you want. But the, this pin will lock you in to increments um, needed to create hole patterns. Just as we were talking about your quantities of 2, 4, 6, 3, 8, 12, 24. All right. These are, these are all standard sets that come with the phase 2. Um, super spacer now we're going to go ahead and because we're going to have we actually have two hole patterns we have a four hole pattern and a six hole pattern so we're going to leave it completely unmasked we're going to we're not going to put any we're going to put the bottom back on here and we're going to run it like that and we went ahead and even though it may be silly and you you may not be able to you need to visually look at numbers sometimes so that you don't make any mistakes you know we put a little bit of time in on that part in la now we can't be scrapping it out so we're going to be going on on the whole pattern for the four we'll be hitting 0 90 180 and 270 and on the uh um six whole uh uh quantity there's 0, 60, 120, 180, 240, and 300. Now, we also may be staggering one of these uh, to bypass the other one because we can't have two holes lining up. There can't be two zeros. Okay, we already know that none of these six here are in line with the four. So one of those has to be staggered. Okay, and we will go ahead and calculate out which needs to be staggered and uh, and we'll probably take the four hole pattern and stagger it to where it'll be 45 and corresponding 90 degrees from each each uh, point there all right so 
Back to the, the question of how to stagger these off and what we did is we went ahead and got the calculator and to put the four hole pattern in there we will be starting out at 45, 135, 225 and 315 will be the degrees on the index head that will be uh, corresponding to those and then we'll be able to time them in. You can see that two out of the on each side of the six are actually splitting in between the four so that's how we're going to end up with that and then two of the six will be straight straight in between or in line with the four all right so what we're going to do is we all we did was take the four and stagger it from being in line with these two to being in between those two all right let's go ahead and put the uh, plate back on and uh, just making sure there's no chips in here We're, we're pretty well set up here now and we have this this up here and we're getting ready to put this into the chuck but there's going to be one thing that we need to do before we actually do put that in. Alright but we want this jaw to be in line so we're going to go ahead and we're going to back this one off here. We're going to leave that one in there and we're going to cock this until this is looking pretty straight in line. It doesn't have to be exact or perfect but we want it pretty well in line because we're going to zero in on this and then we're going to come over and we know that we'll be center of this jaw and the, these three jaws in this point here. It's uh, That way our four hole pattern will miss the other jaws. Alright, so we're going to tighten this one down here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull this bolt out of here. Set it off to the side. And we're going to go ahead and put a toe clamp and block over here. All right, <clears throat> and we're going to go ahead and throw a washer up there so we're not just uh, clamping down on uh, that open mouth there. Just like that. There we go. It's a little better clamp. And we're not destroying anything. All right, all right. Now we want to clamp onto this without putting jaw marks into it. So we set this up in here, and these are just pieces of strapping, and they're all exactly the same kind of strapping, same thickness, same piece. And we put them down in between. We're gonna to have to open it just a little bit. All right. Now we're firmly holding down. Now, by squeezing in here, those sharp corners or edges on the jaws, which most of these type of jaws on these kind of tools here are um, pretty stout and aluminum dents pretty easy. Even the 60 series aluminum here um, does dent pretty easy. Now we're ready to go ahead and dial this zero and then we can start figuring out our, our whole patterns. All right, and we are locked down. We're let, locked down there. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab my indicator, and that looks pretty good. All right, we're going to put the coaxial in here. <clears throat> and bring it on down in here. I've already swept this, and <laughs> I actually have it pretty true, but the camera wasn't in the right position. But I'm going to run through the steps again here with you. All right, <clears throat> and... Uh, First off, I'm going to go ahead and give this just a little bit more speed here. And I'm going to get the uh, lubricant. When it comes to coaxial indicators and spinning them in the bore here, a little bit of lubrication works pretty good in here. the table back and forth and when your needle smooths out or becomes non-moving you can see each direction will allow you to go all right that's that's pretty close right there it's just bouncing a little bit sometimes it's because 
it's because of the aluminum and the contact tip or whatever in there now this is there's different feet that go in here so this is really just kind of reference it's not necessarily a thou I mean it might be a, 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 a thousand or whatever d uh, dimension up and down on the spindle there but it's in and out on the contact here I'm not exactly sure that that would be exactly a, uh, a thousands or so because that same motion with a six inch arm because there's other tip contacts that go way out there uh, whether it be the same increment or not all right but it, it maybe how the barrel moves this way it might be but the uh, contact tip it's not moving in an exact uh, dimension just like the finger on the end of the uh, one inch indicator all right and uh, when you put this in neutral I mean you can really get down to where you're four pointing it and you can go in and out or side to side all right and then just rotate this and you can actually see that you would be on that side or this side you would be at that back side or towards you um, anyway that's how the coaxial indicator works and I've got this dialed in ready to go now so I set my zeros here on my X and my Y all right first I'm gonna go ahead and come over here uh, half of the six diameter is two and an eight two and an eighth right there all right and we're gonna spot that in and we're just glancing this down and it looks like it's close to the same all right all right now we're going uh, That's zero. Now we're going to 60. Now we're going to 120. Now we're going to 180. Now we're going to 240. And then we're going to 300. All right, and we can go back to zero. All right, our tap size for three uh, three eighths is five sixteenths. All right, now we know that we got we got jaws here that we're going to be coming down on. And uh, that thickness is uh, 900, give or take a thou. And um, so we want to go ahead and we're going to set our dial right about there. And we're going to come down and we're going to feel when we start skipping in there. Um, because we're going to be able to come through on these two and on that one there. But these three right here, uh, we're going to have to hold them shallow. And then we're going to finish this whole thing and then we're going to spin it and be able to pop those through afterwards. I should start feeling uh, just about now on the interrupted cut there. Yep. Okay, I'm going to take that down to 800. Okay, now I can go all the way through on this one. Starting to feel the interrupted and 800. I'm just hoping that holds it shy about a hundred thousand from going all the way through. All right, this one here I can go all the way through. And last one, and this one can go all the way through as well. All right, we get our vacuum. All right, 
right, we're going to go ahead and countersink these holes a little bit. I'm just going to go around and power tap these just to get them started. All right, now I know that I got to go, I'm only going to be able to go about 800, so I'm going to set my dial on there on those. Uh, on, you know, I'm, at least I'm making sure that it's not going to go down any farther than that. And uh, really well lubricate this. And about 750. We can come back in and do those by hand afterwards. Alright, at least we know we have starting uh, tap holes and they're in line and we can come in there and cut those by hand afterwards so that we can go ahead and run it down through the, we know we can run it down through these now, but these three here, we're going to have to rotate this thing, but we're going to go ahead, let's get our four holes in there now with the countersinks and then we'll come back to tap these, or you know, drill and tap these the rest of the way out. Okay, first hole is 45 degrees. All right, and we have to come out. <clears throat> We're at uh, two and an eighth. We need to come out at uh, two four sixty. There we go, two four sixty. All right, now we go ahead and we put in our starting drill again. And that looks like it'll be that hole right there. Sure does look close. Oh well. Well, let's get some speed on here. All right. All right, now we're going to go to... 135. One thirty-five. Now we're gonna go to two twenty-five. And the next one, we're going to go to 315. All right, and those are uh, 3 8 straight through holes. Okay, now these these two here, I thought they were clear, but they don't look like they're going to clear. So I'm going to gauge these off the dial here as well and take those down to about 800. About 850 at least, okay. Okay, a little clean up on the back in there. And a little bit there. Alright, 
Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to loosen up the jaws here. And we're going to rotate this opening here to this one here, which is going to put it. Uh, should we go 180 or not? Let's see. If we rotate it. If we rotate it to there, I think it'll open up and clear the other the other three units here as well. I'm mean, gonna do this. Okay, let's go let's go for our four first. So let's go ahead and rotate it uh, we'll rotate it 180 so that we can drill down through these two finish these two holes right here. And 180 will also spin our six hole pattern exactly 180, which would free up the three here. Let's do that. 180. Move the coolant can there. Okay. Let's go 180. Let's pop these out first. Okay. Pop these back in. Okay, drill bit down in. Okay, tightened up. Okay, now with this being 180. We should be able to go down through this one. Finish drilling it. Good. This one. Good. All right. Now let's go ahead and countersink the four tops here. And let's figure out what we got for a diameter here. And we'll come back with a cutter. All right. We're getting ready to put in the countersinks so that the Allen heads will fit down in, in, in here. And I think I found part of the problem here because you can see this is a plate that goes over those and then kind of gives a new surface for the six holes that are going in there. I don't know why we're making two parts or whatever, but that's what I was told to. Um, and I was checking the depth of these holes and I went around here and this one here is like 370 and these other ones here are like 375, 385, and 365 and this is a sample this is actually one of the bolts that broke off of here and it's like 370 so these things were actually interfering right off the bat so once those started wearing a little bit they got loose and that's how this whole thing was like becoming just unbearably loose and came apart on them so what I'm gonna do is and I'm, I'm set up now to go ahead and do the countersinks we're going to make sure that, uh, and these are Umbraco type uh, Allens that I got here. These are 387 thousandths on the height here. And that one's 370. There's probably a little bit of, actually this, you know, they, they might be just out of two different uh, batches right there. It's got the same name and everything else on them. But uh, anyhow, 375. 370. I might have I might have had a chip underneath there the first time I measured it. 375. 375. The one that broke in here was 372. 373. Somewhere around in there. But when you have these are too shallow. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that they're at least 380, 385, 390. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that they are sunk in more than being right on the borderline because I believe it was under false tension and then it just took a little while for it to work a little loose once it worked a little loose it ripped those studs right out of there 